Hello everybody and welcome to Learning with Chrono. Today we are going to be taking an in-depth look at the differences between the heavy armor block and the light armor block. Now these two blocks are the basis for pretty much everything that's built and the most commonly used block in the entire game. Thus, it would be wise to understand both of them in depth. The light armor block can be recognized by its smoother paint job. It requires 25 steel plate for the large ship or the station, and just one steel plate for the small ship. The heavy armor block can be recognized by its slightly camouflage style paint job. It requires 150 steel plate for the large ship or the station, and 5 steel plates for the small ships. But does this increase in steel plate requirement equal the same amount of increase in protection? To test that, I have three experiments set up to test mass damage, thruster damage, and weapon damage to see if the heavy armor block is comparable to how much extra inventory it needs. The first test is the weapons test. Here I have a light armor block and a heavy armor block with Gatling guns pointed at them. These Gatling guns are attached to a small cargo container with a little bit of extra ammo in them just to just in case. All I have to do is jump into the cockpit, turn on the reactor, and fire until they both break. As we can see, the heavy armor block won that race by a landslide. The second test is to test thruster damage. I have a similar setup here as I did on the first test. I have a light armor block beside a heavy armor block and two thrusters pointed at them. So all I have to do is get into the cockpit, press the back button, and we will see what damage each of these blocks can take. Now we can see that the light armor block is gone already, so that would seem that the heavy armor block has a distinct advantage over the light armor block. However, when it goes, it tends to take a lot of other blocks with it. And that's because the heavy armor block takes that much more damage, thus all of the other blocks that it's attached to also take that much more damage. The third and final test is to test mass damage. That is a heavy object accelerated to high speeds impacting the armor blocks. Now what I would normally do, given the proper circumstances, would be to just let these armor blocks be hit by asteroids. However, it is difficult to predict when the asteroids are going to strike and where they're going to strike. So we have to improvise. In these setups, we have two identical setups except for the blocks used. On the green side is the light armor blocks, on the red side is the heavy armor blocks. The floor is the impact zone. Along the side we have four gravity generators, a landing gear to attach things to, then we have an artificial mass with its own power supply. So the idea is we turn on the reactor for the artificial mass, we turn on the reactor for the gravity generators, and then we remove the landing gear, allowing the artificial mass to fall at speed into our floor. The power for both the artificial mass and the gravity generator are active, so let's remove the landing gear from the equation. And we can see massive damage to our landing platform. Now over on the heavy armor block we have the same situation. The gravity generators are active and so is the artificial mass. Let's remove the landing gear from the equation. We can see that the heavy armor block has taken almost no damage whatsoever from the same exact test that destroyed at least six light armor blocks. Please note to eliminate any kind of 
interference, I have disabled the gravity generators on the light armor block test. And the results are in. Quite clearly, the heavy armor block has won. Its hole is significantly greater than the sum of its parts. I hope this video has given you a greater respect for the armor block, both light and heavy. I know it has for me. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will say to you guys as always, keep playing the game, and have fun.